Hello guys, hope you're doing well today. Coming at you with the next excerpt of my first novel, Black and White Odyssey of Eden, in a series. Uh, continuing where we left off. So let's, uh, let's have at it. Or at least, this is what he told himself. In a desperate attempt at disillusion to believe that humanity was better uh, than what the path of their destruction would indicate. At this point in his life, he convinced himself that he did not care that the Doomsday Clock, as they called it, was 0.1 seconds from midnight. But he did. Why else would he toil? In this barren, solitary, dirty shed. Regardless of how hard he attempted to repress the emotions welling up from within his soul, he was just tinkering, operating on hunches, crunching numbers and calculations. He felt aimless. But what else did he have? Several months passed like this, him walking from his apartment to the small wooded area, making sure no one saw where he was going. On the weekdays, he could come after work and toil until dusk. On the weekends, he was consumed by his misfiring ideas, his release from reality, his escape. Finally, on a hot summer afternoon, as he sat upon his torn stool, he pressurized a measurement of mercury he had uh, managed to smuggle from his job a couple weeks ago and placed it in a cavity he had bored into a high RPM industrial turbine, one which he had acquired in the same way only several months prior. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, he exclaimed as he looked in dismay at the mess before him, placing his hands upon his hips his dirty gloves staining the already soiled white lab coat he was wearing. He was just shooting in the dark, and he knew it. But it had worked for him before. Try magnetizing it, the scientist said to himself in the chamber. Let's speed you along. You're going to figure this out anyway. Try magnetizing it, a thought came to him, seemingly out of nowhere. His eyes lit up as he turned to look at a cylindrical high-power magnet he had sitting on a wooden table uh, behind him. He secured it on a mount next to the cavity that would allow the cavity to spin unimpeded and flipped a power switch on the turbine. It slowly began to spin up to several hundred revolutions per minute. Nothing. The scientist uh, started to get frustrated. Damn it! Do something different! He increased the speed of the turbine's rotation a few hundred more revolutions per minute. An unknown buzzing sound be uh, began to arise from the object. It was not the buzzing of the turbine's rotation. It was something else. His excitement grew, and he increased the rotation rate even more, this time to several thousands of revolutions per minute. The buzzing sound did not get louder, but sharper as the contraction began to shake. Damn it! Do something! He sped up the rotation to the highest possible setting the turbine's mount would allow and watched it break away, knocking him down to the ground, dust rustling through the air. He coughed a few times, then looked up, expecting a destruction uh, to meet his glance. Instead, he was met by the contraption somehow staying together, the magnet still on its mount, though vibrating slightly from the rotation of the system. Through the cloud of dust, he saw it suspended in midair. Above it, he saw what appeared to be a black, silhouetted hole, about the size of a compact disc, anchored to... nothing. He scuffled quickly, trying to stand up to see it cl uh, closer. It appeared to have depth, if one were to look into it, but no thickness on its own. As he peered into it, he saw himself stumbling onto the ground, kicking up a cloud of dust, and immediately thereafter, skies covered with clouds of soot, sick and dying people crying in agony, moving as quickly as the, uh, their decrepit bodies would allow them in, in order to escape a city up in flames in the background. As quickly as the sight had rested upon his conscience, it vanished, 
as the magnet fell from its mount and the turbine crashed to the ground in a thunderous upheaval of dust and debris. That's it for this section. I'll continue with the next one later. Love y'all. Peace.